I want to show some caveats with triggers. Um, first of all, you can have as many after triggers as you want on a table, but you can only have one instead of, which makes sense. And instead of trigger does something instead of doing something else, whereas the after triggers, it does it, and then you could have a zillion after trigger triggers checking things, and if one of them rolls back, then then the whole transaction rolls back. But anyway, let me um let, let's have a little fun here. Create trigger trig one uh, on contrived table. Uh, after insert as begin uh, and then I'm going to say print trig1 just to show you that this is executing. And so we're going to create trigger trig1 uh, go and let's create another trigger trig2 and and uh, order of execution is not guaranteed but but uh, chances are that it'll just run in the order that we create them. So I'm going to I have my contrive table. I'm creating two triggers on contrive. They're both after triggers. Run. It's installed. Okay. So now let's uh, let's control and do a new query just so we can gain back our screen real estate. Let's uh, insert into contrived values, and I believe it was a var char if I remember right on that one column. The value. Okay. So values. Let's just insert me because I don't know what else to put. So. Contrived, I spell it right? I hope so. Ah, there we go. One row is affected. Trig one, trig two. Let's run it again. Trig one, trig two. We can do this all day long and firing both triggers. And you can see I could copy and paste and create a whole mess of triggers. Ideally, you only have a few or one, that kind of thing. Now, let's do, uh, let's do, you know, just for fun, let's do trig three. Let's install a trig three. Trig three. Ah, uh, commands completed successfully. Here's my insert. Boom, we see trig three. Okay, so let's get rid of this down here and change this to and instead of instead of insert, we're going to print um, instead of trigger. And let's run this. So F5 is already object. Oh, sorry. Let's call it my instead of trigger. Okay, and we'll install that. So now we have three triggers. We have the three after triggers we just did. And then we have this instead of trigger. Now watch what happens when I insert into contrived. In fact, you'd be wise to pause here and think what's going to happen and, and try to come up with a hypothesis before we see it run. But let's just run it. Boom! Instead of trigger. Notice the after triggers didn't run. It's a little deceiving because it said one row is affected, but it really didn't affect any rows. It didn't. The reason why we have one row is affected is it's just reporting that, hey, you, you inserted a row into this this table here, but the trigger in the background did did nothing. It's, but that's hidden away from us when we are over here. Okay, so so it, it, it this instead of trigger did nothing. Our insert did nothing, and hopefully this makes sense because the instead of trigger it, it didn't do anything to the actual base table is what we call this. It didn't modify it and insert it. It didn't it didn't do anything. It just printed. That was it. So those after triggers, remember, they only run after data is actually modified in the base table. Okay, so so we should probably do something here. Let's we could make this a pass through trigger. Insert into contrived um, select splat from inserted. That would just that would be a passive a, a pass through table or a pass through trigger. Uh, which is fine. It demonstrates what we're trying to do. So let's uh, let's try to install this trigger. Boom! It's going to complain because we already have that trigger there. So drop trigger uh, my instead of trigger. I'm going to put this here. I'm gonna, just going to highlight the drop and drop it. Commands complete successfully. Uh, and now let's reinstall this trigger. F5. Okay. We just replaced our instead of trigger. So let's go over here and um, run this. Insert it into contrived. Uh, value Jamie, which is just going to pass through. Notice here, we're actually modifying the base underlying table here. So then at this point, we will see our instead of trigger, and then, oh, here's all the after, after triggers. So before, between these two lines here is where the where the data actually was inserted. In fact, let's have a little fun here. Uh, I'm going to double the insert. Okay? So... I'm going to insert what they were trying to insert, but then I'm going to insert it again. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's do drop trigger. Let me. I guess I could have kept this. I deleted it. I could do the if object ID trick, but I'm being lazy here. 
Uh, okay, now let's reinstall this trigger. Okay, so it's going to insert into the contrived table twice. So instead of doing Jamie, let's do King. And uh, let's run this. Boom! There we go. Instead of trigger, trig 1, trig 2, trig 3, look, we see one row's affected. And that came because this insert affected one row. But then we turn around and we do the insert again, which causes the after triggers to run again. Trig 1, trig 2, and trig 3. And then the one row's affected is here because of this insert. We inserted, we inserted what was they were trying to insert. And then we see one more row's affected here because SQL is reporting to us. It, it's kind of deceiving again that there's actually only two rows affected, one on this insert and one on this insert. Um, and then it's just reporting this one because technically it did, or it, uh, at least it looks like we've inserted a row into the base contrived table when really the, the trigger decided to do something else. But anyway, th there you go. You can have multiple after triggers, one instead of trigger, and the after triggers really only execute after you modify the base tables. If, if I never modify those base tables, or I go and I turn around and insert the data into some other tables, then the other tables triggers will run. But 